Welcome to Virtual Realms. I'm Ranger One. And this is the second part of the little mini-series that I'm doing on the ERC-90. This was recorded during the stress test that happened right before the start of open beta, and you can see by the chat that some people were surprised that there were so few people in the match. But they're failing to take into account the fact that the stress test had been extended because they'd had some server issues early on, and this is very, very late at night, so all I have to say about that conversation is, well, duh. Before I show you the main match that I wanted to feature in this second part, I just wanted to take a moment and show you some highlights from this match and explain a, a couple of things about the actual background of the ERC-90 in reality. This is a great little vehicle. It's never been heavily produced, but it was picked up by elements of the French military, as well as militaries in Argentina, Chad, Cote de la Voix, Ecuador, Gabon, Mexico, and Niger. That Centauro up ahead looks like the only real resistance on this side of the map. So we'll lay a shot into him, he'll get polished off, and checking the mini-map I see that just about everyone else is in the actual refinery all the way across the map from me. So, time to put the excellent mobility of the ERC-90 to the test. I think I'll top out at about 80 kilometers per hour. It's kind of interesting, this vehicle can actually, in reality, raise the center two road wheels up when traversing uh, roadways for a little extra speed, only dropping them down when it has to deal with exceptionally sandy or muddy environments. Now that Zalo up ahead is, well, I'm gonna put a shot into him first, but he's going to keep going and try to sweep around our flank and get behind the entirety of my team. I'm the only one in a position to do anything about it, so I quite literally am going to have to head him off at the pass. I've been waiting to say that all video. Hey, if you can't spend half a video setting up a really bad music-oriented pun, What's the point of having a YouTube channel to begin with? Before I can get around to him, that Zalo holds up for just a minute to put some shots in and polish off the AFK T-72 that is back by our base. And he's holed up in that little ravine down there. I don't think I can take him down with one shot and he's moving on quickly, so I'm going to have to go ahead and go for it. I know that's going to hurt, but I, I'm pretty sure this vehicle can take it, and it does. I didn't want him to get away from me. I wanted to keep the pressure on him and stay in hot pursuit. If he gets into a good cover position, he's going to be harder to take care of. We'll slap in another shot. We actually trade blows there, and I'm going to switch to heat. We exchange shots again, but since I'm using heat ammunition, I should have the advantage in raw damage. One final volley, and I am standing, and he is not. Well, this match is just about over. My team's doing very well there in the refinery, and I'm going to move forward to support them. But before I can get there, it's pretty much all over. I'm only lingering here for just a moment to point out one other interesting fact about this vehicle. It's actually fully aquatic in real life, and its uh, propulsion in the water is supplied by the wheels, or you can easily fit it with hydro jets behind the rear wheels, which is a nice little touch. With the ERC-90, Panhead has produced a very versatile and effective vehicle. One that has seen combat action in a variety of environments, uh, including Sarajevo and the Falkland Islands, among others. Well, that's enough preamble. Now I'd like to show you the main battle that I wanted to feature this episode. It's on the River Point map again, this time on the opposite side from the last video I did. And you'll notice that in chat, which always cracks me up, Someone on our team has already conceded the match to the other team. <laughs> they do have three starships on their side, and it's going to be a fairly rough match. Um, but I really don't see a problem with this matchup. You will see some spirited debate in chat about the pros and cons of the starship. I find it to be an interesting tank to run, and we'll feature it in a few videos in the near future. Suffice to say that throughout the course of this battle, we'll be facing those starships repeatedly. Which will give us an excellent opportunity to see how the ERC-90 fares against them. As is my habit when running a tank destroyer, I'm going to move 
forward into a position where I can see how the battle is playing out without committing myself too heavily to one side or the other. This thing has a very good view range and I can see the bulk of the battlefield pretty clearly from up here. Our Dragoon, on the other hand, is moving forward rapidly into a well, somewhat exposed position over on the right flank and I'm a little concerned for him over there. So I'm going to kind of focus on providing him as much cover as I can and let him act as a set of eyes for me. There's the first customer up for bid. He's a BMP-1P over there. He's a low target. I think my shot just sailed right over the top of him. And I lost him from view temporarily. He's not alone, however, and the first starship that I'm going to spot this round comes into view. Again, my shot goes a little high. We'll try and compensate, but he has some cover over there of some sort. Switch back to the BMP. Good hit into him. He's ducking in and out of cover over there. And there's another Dragoon on the enemy team moving forward. I'd like to get a shot into him. He's a, a dangerous opponent. The city's starting to heat up as well. And it looks like that is exactly where the enemy Dragoon is heading. He's going to sweep around our Dragoon and move into the city, but he's exposing himself to fire from me, and there's an 800T there ready to engage him as well. I missed him with my first shot. The 800T is laying into him pretty hard, but he's going to get popped if he's not careful. He almost got popped by me. My shot barely missed him. We're going to finish off that Dragoon. If I had hit and killed our uh, 800T, my name would have turned purple as a team killer, uh, signifying that to everyone on both teams. I'd rather not have that happen. That starship that was over there has moved up to the edge of the town, and unfortunately I don't have any other shots from up here. It's time to move on. I've noticed there's an M60 on our team on the other side of the highway, and he's engaging two other enemy tanks, and he needs some backup badly. He's not going to last very long. So I'm going to see if I can get over there in time to hopefully do him some good. Unfortunately, though, I don't get in position in time. So I'm going to take a moment and finish off that BMP who launched a missile at me and my built-in automatic anti-missile defense system kicked in and saved me from immediate harm. It's now on cooldown. You'll see the timer in the lower left-hand corner of the screen on the right side of the radial menu. That defense system is certainly a lifesaver. If it hadn't taken care of that incoming missile for me, I would have taken significant damage and I would not have been able to hang in there until the end of this battle. I am not about to sit on the other side of the highway and engage that starship one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to take him a while to cover the ground, so I'm going to take the opportunity to head to the hills to see if I can cover the oncoming assault on the left flank of the battle and watch the city as well. There'll be time enough to deal with that starship when he arrives in just a moment. And here he comes, heading under the overpass right now. But now I've got a good vantage point to shoot from. Put a good shot into him. I take a pretty hefty return hit, but at least now I have plenty of cover to fall back into up here. I'm also going to take fire from the rear, from our left flank. So I've got to move over a little bit, put some cover between me and them, and see if I can pick a likely target from this vantage point. You'll notice that King Smurf on the enemy team has also turned purple at this point. He has likely accidentally finished off one of his teammates, much as I almost did. My heart goes out to him. Now I'm going to have to commit to one side or the other. I commit to the left-hand side. That starship will keep for a few moments. It'll take him a little bit to get into any sort of effective position. We're being pushed hard from the left. Another starship's moved into view and I put a good shot into him. I line up again and I deflect off that oddly shaped turret the starship has. We'll try one more time. And again, no penetration. But then he turns the side of his turret to me, which is a terrible idea. And I ammo rack him and take him out of the battle. I'll take a minute to head over and check on the progress our OF-40 is making. He's the only one over there on the left, but he appears to have the situation well in hand. And that starship is attempting to cap, which really 
wasn't the best move. He's let everyone on my team know exactly where he's at. The only other enemy team member left is an artillery piece that is just about to die. So I'm going to move into a position opposite our OF-40. One where we can double team the starship to death. That way, no matter which one he decides to try and deal with first, ooh, and he almost took me out. Uh, when he turns to deal with one of us, he'll be exposing himself to fire from the other. I'm hoping that this will lead to another opportunity to ammo rack this starship as well. So I leave Sabo in and move forward to see if I can put a shot into the side of his turret. I just need to time it so I catch him when he's looking the other way. Good opportunity, but no penetration. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to high explosive. So far, high explosive rounds have seemed to be pretty effective in this gun, so I'm hoping they won't let me down. There's my opportunity, I take the shot, and it takes him the rest of the way out of the match. They are pretty good in this gun. Let's take a moment and see how the match ended up. Well, we ended the match with a pretty respectable four kills, and we got some base defense points. I didn't even realize that was a thing. Five spots, four kills and good damage on all of them, and a little spotting damage to boot. I can live with that. I was able to leverage the strengths of this vehicle on that map, I think fairly effectively, because I had that high ground to work with. I could use the mobility of the vehicle to move back and forth, forward when necessary, and then fall back, and put that nice gun it has to good use for the bulk of the match. In closing, I'll just say, if you like Tank Destroyer gameplay in Armored Warfare, give this one a try. And until I see you again, good hunting. Thanks for watching. I hope you were entertained. If you liked the video, please remember to subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you. And I'll see you next time.